to our breaking news story. Negar Mortazavi is a journalist who joins us now from Washington, uh, D.C. Um, Negar, I want to get your take on to the U.S.'s announcement on this latest sanction uh, that's been imposed on Iran's Foreign Minister Javad Zarif. Well, this is another mixed message coming from the White House of President Trump. Because President Trump has been saying that he wants to negotiate with Iranians and he wants to cut a new deal, a better deal. And then the White House goes around and sanctions the top diplomat who would have to be the tool or the conduit for these negotiations to start and get anywhere. So I'm not sure what the decision making in the White House is. It seems to be that the, the more hawks uh, that surround the president have been able to win uh, this time and basically push this, which would that this would force Iran and the U.S. more toward uh, conflict and tension uh, in a situation where both are at the brink of uh, a military engagement in the region. And I think it's definitely helpful in the direction of diplomacy. Negar, you said that this is just a mixed message, but I'm looking into another statement coming out from a U.S. official. They say that they're still open to talks with Iran and that they don't see uh, Javad Zarif as key. So how does this work? Right. This is the mixed message I'm talking about. How It's like hanging up the phone and saying you're open to talk because this is, Javad Zarif is going to be the channel. It was the main person, the top person, the channel that we used for negotiations under President Obama. He was the main person who cut the deal, the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal, the historic deal. And uh, this time around, he's still going to be the person, the, the channel, basically, to Iranian leadership. And if President Trump wants that channel uh, to open, wants the negotiations to happen, it has to be through Javad Zarif. And the administration keeps saying that Mr. Zarif is not a significant decision maker in Iran, but at the same time, they, they're treating him like a significant uh, decision maker. So I think there's even a mixed understanding within the White House of what the role of Mr. Zaif. And I also wanted to add this point that he's not just the top diplomat, he's also the top communicator of Iranian policies to the world. He's uh, one of the very rare Iranian diplomats who speaks really well English. He understands mm -hmm. Western media. He makes these speeches. He makes these appearances, interviews. And it seems like the U.S. Um, administration is trying to cut that as well. Maybe even his Twitter account where he tweets in English. Yeah, uh, actually, we just read that out too. All right, so I, I want to get your take. Now, looking at the, the, the Treasury Department's uh, uh, reasoning, it's, it said that it was imposing sanctions on Javad Zarif for acting specifically on behalf of Iran's supreme leader. So why don't they just come out and actually impose sanctions on the supreme leader? Well, there have been sanctions imposed on Iranian hardliners, the IRGC, the Supreme Leader's offices, and other elements within the Iranian political structure. But to pick Javad Zarif, again, as I said, is a little bit strange, because if President Trump says he doesn't want regime change, and he wants to negotiate with Iran's current leaders, as he has mentioned, then Javad Zarif, like I said, is the channel to negotiate with Iran's current leader. So, this, it, in, in a way, some analysts here in Washington are saying if President Trump really wants regime change and he doesn't want negotiations, he should just come out and say it. But so far, it just seems like he either doesn't know what he wants or he says something and he does something else. This is definitely not the path for negotiations and the new deal with the Iranian leadership. All right, if I can just ask our gallery to put up uh, Javad Zarif's tweet in response to the U.S. just uh, of this recent announcement. Uh, Javad Zarif, he tweeted that the uh, U.S.'s reason for designating me is that I'm Iran's primary spokesperson around the world. Uh, is the truth really that painful? Uh, it has no effect on me or my family as I have no property or interests outside of the, uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Thank you for considering me such a huge threat to your agenda. I wanted to get your take on sort of the tone of the Iranian foreign minister here. Well, I think there's some truth to that. The Iranian foreign minister is not known for always being completely truthful. I mean, he is the spokesperson for the Islamic Republic. His job is also to go around, say the truth, but also lie for the Islamic Republic. And there's been so much criticism directed at him by Iranians, by the Iranian diaspora, and by the world leaders. But there's also um, a certain truth to what he says and what, how he positions the Iranian uh, position basically in the world. And it seems like the U.S., um, specifically I think the State Department and maybe Secretary of State hasn't been really able to take that 
And uh, we've seen in the past that Iranian officials who've been sanctioned and designated, they had their Twitter accounts closed. But I think that's one of the main targets as far as Mr. Zaif. And also this will probably limit his travel, especially in the West, especially in European um, countries. And this will also limit contact uh, from, from Western uh, institutions, politicians, and probably even media with, with okay. Mr. Zaif. Nikar Mortazavi, thank you for your analysis. I appreciate it.